Yeah, well, the information that we have, you can get to it after today. So just know that, we're gonna give you that link. Um, and we update that link periodically. So if as you, of last night. Uh, yeah, <laughs> as, actually as of last night, uh, and we add resources all the time and take resources off that are no longer available. We try to keep it as fresh as we can. So um, real quick, my name's Rhonda Bruce. I am a, a focus, STEM, STEM focus educator for our focuses at Gallatin High School, which are our uh, two academies that we're doing. And I also do part-time technology for the district as well as I train outside my district. And this is? I am Kathy Fryer with Sumner County Schools and I'm the technology specialist for Title I schools. So I have 15 schools that I, re I report to and work with uh, technology just in those buildings. So, we're gonna start. Uh, we, have, we have a binder that is online. If you go to livebinders.com. And just to show, to make sure we don't lose you, how many of you know about live binders? Good, some people, yay, whoop. Half maybe. Yeah, maybe. good deal. So livebinders.com, and when you get there, um, you can search by author. And so you would search by my name, all lowercase, no spaces. No, it's in mine. No, it's in mine. Is this mine or author? Yeah, but it's still in mine too. Oh, okay, because we did play. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Rhonda Bruce, no spaces, uh, and lowercase. It's Rhonda with a Honda. And uh, the binder is called Technology to Support Common Core. There are a lot of other binders on there. You're welcome to uh, grab any of the other binders that may be there that may be useful for you. Uh, just a real quick thing about live binders. I use live binders for professionalism as well. So when we're doing the team rubric professionalism, um, I do a portfolio in my live binders. So I can elaborate all of my, put all my stuff in a live binder and then I send the link to my principal so that he can grade my professionalism portfolio that way. So if I have documents I need to upload or if I have a website that has content on it that I present from, I can give him that link and that information in my binder and I share that with him. You can make them private or public. So if you're not familiar with live binders, you can make them private or public. I usually make my binders private when I start creating them. And then once I get them finished, then I make them public. So if you have an account, it's a free setup account. Uh, you can make an account. And once you find my binder and you're logged into your account and you do a search within live binders, you can actually make a copy of my binder and that'll put it in your account. Or add it to your shelf. Or add it to your shelf. And I think if you make a copy, um, you can actually edit it. But if you, make, if you add it to the shelf, anytime I update it, you'll have the most updated information. So that way you can keep it within your account. You don't have to go look for me all the time uh, to get my information. Does that make sense? Can you do both? Yes. You sure can. And that way, if there's stuff in the binder that you don't need to use, you can edit it and take it out. And then as I add new stuff, you can copy it over and put it in your binder. Um, there are a lot of binders on LiveBinder that other teachers and educators have created on Common Core. There's tons of stuff out there. Uh, I'm all about collaborating with others. Uh, most people call that, uh, I guess we call it collaboration. Some people call it in other parts of the world, they call it cheating or stealing. But uh, educators call it collaboration. So we pull, you know, we pull and borrow those things. So you can add that to your uh, shelf, making a copy of it, and you'll be able to edit that and add your own resources and so, kind of not have to start from the beginning. And I tell teachers all the time, make live binders your first resource instead of Google, because there are so many resources within live binders for Common Core that if you do a search for Common Core ELA, you'll probably come up with over a hundred, maybe even close to a thousand resources or binders. Okay, I'm going to skip in our binder all the way over to the teacher tab and talk about a couple of teacher tools that uh, would be helpful for you. And there's some sub tabs here underneath teachers. The first one is, a, is a, a resource I found this week on Wednesday. I was in my leadership for Common Core training, checking my email. I opened up a newsletter and this came up. It's called Common Core Explorer. And when you go down here and click on mathematics, It will give you the different grade levels, so we'll just click on a grade, doesn't matter which one. <laughs> we might understand those, those uh, concepts. Is, Scroll it, down. is it clicking? Yeah, it should click. No, that's okay, try third. Maybe there's no resources there for that one yet. I know I'll and this is an ongoing, uh, teachers are, and educators are con continuously adding content. Okay, I'll tell you what. Mr. Robert, will you go up to the top where it says 
graphite.org, a little up, a little further higher. Where are you? Oh, down, down lower, where the URL is, right there. Click on it and oh, it may in a new tab, hopefully. That may be okay. what it is. And now click on that and click on third grade. Yes. And so okay. here are the actual components of our math in third grade. So if we click on one of those, so operations and algebraic thinking, then over here on this side, they have the standard with resources. This has 38 products. The first one does. So if we click on the little arrow, it drops down and gives us technology resources for those, for that particular standard. I love this page. Okay. I was so I was excited to see this. We and it, about this this week. And she's sending it to me as she's in her meeting. And I, by the way, the reason I was at home is I fell on my face and cut my lip, and now I have stitches in my And broke her nose. And broke my nose. So anyway, I'm here by the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but what I love is it gives awesome. teacher ratings, learning ratings. So we've actually had people use these uh, somewhere on using uh, this with that standard. And notice that some of them are apps, some of them are websites. And this is kind of what Kathy and I have been trying to do is make a collection in our binder of things that would support Common Core uh, standards. So this is just a great resource. I wanted to make sure that you uh, were able this to see that one first. Because what, two years ago, Rhonda and I looked at one another, because we presented together a lot, and we said, you know, we need to start looking at making a site for Common Core with resources for per grade level. Go ahead and go back to the, <laughs> and the funny thing you can get is, back to it. There was people that were already doing it long before we even thought about doing it. So. Back to the binder. And, yeah, just kind of close that. He's in the binder. No, he's not. There's the binder. Yeah, there you go. And then All go right. to, um, do we have it on here? What's that? It's in our other binder. We'll talk about it in our other session. Um, let's go ahead and go to Docs Teach. That is, with Common Core ELA standards and with the Social Studies standards, we have to That's use, is it going? Docs Teach? Yeah, there you go. Um, using uh, primary sources. And that's all embedded throughout our standards. And so this is a great site to go and actually get documentation of a primary source of from a particular document. Now, if you've never seen this before, this is like, you click on, um, let's just look, find, find documents right here. And this, this site will allow you to go to an archive that will actually have the real Declaration of Independence. Here's the Civil War Reconstruction, Civil. Revolution in the New Nation, post United States, just tons of information there, and then there's documents within that particular search. And if you download them straight to your computer, then they're printable or projectable with your, docu with your uh, computer. But because we need primary sources to teach with when we're teaching ELA or science, any of that, then this is a perfect resource for using for those primary resources. So you may be doing a nonfiction, um, historical fiction book and now you can go find those resources that kind of correlate with what that nonfiction book's talking about that was real documents and have those two pieces of text for students to look at and critique. Okay, for example, one click, the, click on the MacArthur's Parade and click YouTube Hill. Okay, there you go. There's the picture. Here's the information. So if you're reading a nonfiction piece or a fiction book in your ELA class, Regarding this particular piece of history, you just pull that straight up, and then you've got two pieces that you can actually work against one another. Really high in the common core is to be able to analyze those two pieces, and uh, we're going to talk about another way to do that in our next session. Okay. Um, this, too, is, um, you know, you can pull this up on your smart board, so you could use it to, together as a group. You could analyze the piece and be able to talk about it together. Um, but just a great resource. It is also an app. Docs Teach is an app as well. So you could put it on your iPad if you have iPads for your classroom where students can access those individually and look up things if they're reporting about something. All right, let's go back to our binder. Yeah, let's stay in there. Let's okay. do Learn Zillion and uh, Learn Zillion. Yeah. How many of you have ever heard of Learn Zillion? A couple. Is it gray or what? It is absolutely fabulous resource. And they just life. recently paid teachers. They had an application process where you could go work for them, and they paid for your travel and to get there. And 
expenses and I can't remember what all to collaborate with other educators from around the world uh, to put resources on LearnZillion. So I don't know if the application process is still open. Uh, not being a classroom teacher, I was like hesitant to do that, but it looked like an awesome opportunity. This particular one is a searchable engine, and they started with, I think, middle school or high school and have worked their way down. So I think they're right about they're still adding. second grade. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the primary level, you may not have a lot of resources, but they are adding to it daily. But this particular, if you want to go to the site, click on learnzillion.com. And then click on. Or it may not be. We might can just pull one of these yeah, up. Yeah, one of the sites, an example. Uh, the reason I like this is because it's video-based instruction. Now, you as the classroom teacher can create an account, and then you can come over to the side. It may not even want you to do that because it is a free account, by the way. But it gives you a code to log in with, so you can pass that code on to your your students. They can and use it at home. They can go home and view that video 25 times if they need to, if they do not understand the content. Another way to flip your classroom. Well, so, and, and another way to do that, people that use QR codes, to be able to put those QR codes to go straight to where you want them to go um, and on your sheet that you've got your you know, homework or whatever they're doing to make those links so they're easier and they can just scan those and go right <coughs> to the videos that are on that particular piece if they need extra help. Uh, just a good way to use that. Uh, these are very easy to understand videos. Sometimes people say, oh, the Khan Academy stuff is too hard to understand. Okay. Well, LearnZillion is very simple. It is standard-based with Common Core. So you can go through and search your standard that you're teaching in your classroom and find a video that's connected to it. It is pretty cool. Also, it will let you download those slides. If you have an intermittent um, web uh, broadband internet in your classroom, you can download the slides so you have a PowerPoint that will do the same thing. You just won't hear the audio of the video. So that's another extra for that because sometimes in my district, you have trouble with the internet. Okay, okay let's go back to the binder. And this next one I'm going to talk about is called Tuvia Labs, and I actually ran across it on Twitter. How many of you guys are on Twitter? Uh, don't you think that's the most awesome PLC there ever was? I mean, I've connected for, to people in Boston, and actually there was a guy in Boston that created an app called Quick Keys, and it grades, you, you can scan over your, you know, bubbled sheets, and it grades it for you like that. And I didn't know how to use it, so I just, you know, instant messaged him on, on Twitter, and within five minutes he he got back with me, explained what I needed to do. It's just a great resource that we wouldn't have had many years ago to be able to do that. So I love Twitter, and it's, I, I mean, I spend most of my evenings, I don't watch shows anymore, I Twitter. <laughs> I go on Twitter and PLC. I spend most PLC. of my mornings, it's got from midnight to one, two to three, when I can't sleep, that if you get a tweet from me, that's what it's She like. sleeps with her devices. I sleep with so, her uh, yes. But this one's called Tuvia Labs, and it's a new, it's new, it's only been out a little while. When I set up my account, this is free as well. You can set up your students as well. Uh, when I set up my account, immediately I got an email back from the developer that said, let me know what data sets you might need for your classroom. And I told him, I said, well, I'm not in the classroom now, but I would love to share this with teachers that I present to you across the state and let them know about it. But it's, it's to teach data literacy. You know, if we want kids to learn how to, to read graphs and charts and understand them, to be able to take information and data that they have and create those, this is a great way to do it. And if you scroll down, I think there's some actual uh, data sets somewhere. Yes. So here's one, Global Happiness Project. They're all recent data. And I actually told him that I was working with health science and agricultural uh, teachers. And recently he's put some health science data on there for me. So uh, I think he would work with you to find information on what you would need if you were wanting to do that. And what you do is you set up your students' accounts, and when you set up your account, you get a demo student account. So you can like play with that student account and see what the kids are seeing on their side. And uh, you actually can give them activities. Some of the data sets already have activities written, but you can write your own. So when you assign a data set to a group of students, you can go in there and tell what activities do you want the kids to do with that data? What do you want them to create? What do you want them to do with it? And, uh, or you can use some that have already have activities with them. But I really like this. I think it's gonna be a really good piece to have so that kids can be more literate with, 
reading charts and graphs and things like that. What age group do you suggest? I have seen elementary in this one. Yeah, okay. I have. I have not used it with elementary, but that's kind of my next project mm -hmm. because I wanted was going to introduce me to this one. What about high school? Yes. She's all about the high school. Yes. Yeah. Yes, most definitely high school. Uh, but I think I have seen some elementary, maybe fourth, fifth grade uh, activities there. And of course, you're looking at the data, so you're able to create the activity around the data based on what your students could do. So I think you could make it work uh, for what you want to do with your students. And I really like it. I thought it was really good. TV allowed. Statistics and data and charts and graphs. Yes. Yes, and I would suggest you go into one that already has some activities written and see what someone used that data set for. Uh, you know, there may be one on earthquakes. We've had several earthquakes here recently all over the place to be able to get information about earthquakes. So that may be something that might be good to look at those data sets and be able to understand uh, the information from that. All right, let's go back to the top of the binder. Say just a bit about that. Marzano, if you're familiar with all his research, the one thing he hounded years ago on was that kids need to start creating their own charts and graphs because once they create their own, they understand the data. So here we are, we're back to the same chart again with Marzano. We need to be able to create our own data and analyze that data because that's what CART's all about. Okay. All right, we're going to go to ELA. And, and this presentation is built around an hour or more session. So there's a lot of stuff in here. And you'll notice I've actually put the anchor standards for the different pieces of the ELA. So they are there. And uh, we would spend a lot of time if we were doing this for an hour and talk about a particular piece and then go back and look at the standards and see where those meet uh, and which standards we could use that for. But we don't really have time for that. We just want to throw some tools out to you that you can go and investigate. So we're going to go to, let me see which one I went to, third, second grade. And in second grade, we have one called Poplet. And I'm not sure that the other one that we talked about is in there. Kathy has a couple. Uh, this one's Poplet. And it is an app. Notice the app is on this side. And these are links so you can get to them from the binder. First of uh, all, Poplet is probably the most useful tool for a classroom teacher from K-12 in math, language, ELA, science, social studies, just about anything you teach. Because it's a great tool for your kids to create with. It's a great tool for you to assess your knowledge because you can give them a subject and have them create their own Poplet. You will know immediately whether or not they And it goes all the way up to high school. Because if we're doing outlining, we no longer need to be grading those outlines to, you know, the Roman numeral, the ABC, you know, do we have the right font, do we have the right point, if we spaced correctly, that's, that's gone. We just need to, for kids to know how to organize and be able to think in an organized manner, and Poplet helps you do that. Now, back in the day, and I've been around a long time, we had in, uh, Inspiration Kidspiration. Mm -hmm. Everybody happens mm -hmm. to remember those? Great products. Tools? Those were great products, but they were very expensive. Poplet and Poplet Lite. Poplet Lite is totally free. The website is free. You can create an account on the website, download Poplet Lite, and you can use that in your classroom all day long and assess the knowledge of what you're teaching. Now, I have used this with kindergarten because we would start with, um, I think it was the Three Little Bears, Tell Me Lots, and we started out with that and webbed out what they knew about that particular story. Then we came back afterwards and we webbed out other pieces of information about that, how much they had learned, and we began to say, okay, what about if Goldilocks had done this? And, then and that is awesome that. because that's backward outlining, you know, taking a document or a story or a written piece and then outlining it so that they learn what an outline looks like. If they've got the text already written, being able to go back and do that, that's an awesome idea. So take it back. Poplet is something, if you're a kindergarten teacher, you can use it. If you're a high school teacher, you can use it. It's so many grade levels. And I heard a presenter one time say, this is your everyday app. If you don't use anything else, put this one on your iPad, put this on your students' iPads, because they can use it every day for every day. Administrators can use it. Just for work right here, we had a CEO that presented uh, some apps for us at a conference, and he uses it to do all of his agendas for his meetings. So he poplets out his agenda, sends it to his staff, and then at, during the meeting they add to that poplet. And so they always have that piece. I, I love it. I think it's a great piece. To and use. poplet light is totally free. Okay, back in the binder, there's an app called uh, Book Creator for the iPad. It is free. Um, it's a great app for building or creating a storybook with pages. 
You can import pictures, you can change your text, you can do your backgrounds and change those. I love this. My high schooler, who's a sophomore, had to do a geometry book for kids. And the, what is it, if, then, and statements? Oh, it's the, it's the uh, if you give a mouse a cookie. Yeah, yeah. Theory, right so they there. had to recreate that around a story, and they had to do their story. So they had to do an outline of their book, and the teacher had to prove it. Then they had to actually create it. And uh, most kids did it in paper form and drew the pictures and put it together. She decided to do it digitally, so we found this app, and it was free, and we imported her pictures, and I actually just took her pictures with my iPad, all the pictures she would need for each piece of her story. Then we pulled them into the book, she put her text on there, and then to print it, I had to make screenshots in my a Photos app, save them, and print them from there. But uh, I'm sure there's a way to send it out, and I was just not in a building where I could do that, so I had to do it that way. You but can send it uh, to yes, and open it in yes, I think that was the situation. I wanted to send it digitally, and the teacher wanted it printed, <laughs> and so we had to work around that to get it printed. But so this particular app lends it, it's another everyday app, it lends itself from K to 12 because my kindergartners that I work with they can use this particular app to take their own little pictures. They're very simple books, but by the time they finish, they have such pride in their authorship because they have created their own content. Yeah, awesome product. Okay, back in our binder in the same one, there's one called Sock Puppets. This is another one that I think you can use all the way across the board. As speaking from high school, when we do those hard things with Shakespeare and we've got Hamlet and we've got all that, why not let the kids create an act using the Sock Puppets based around what they've read in that act? And then Kathy's used it with elementary. We it's a great it. piece. Yes, it's a great tool for you to have with your young children. And speaking, all, listening, yes, writing, speaking, it's all in there. For all those kids that do not like to speak in front of a microphone, this particular app gives them that particular piece that they can use. It squeaks their voice so they don't feel intimidated when they first hear yours on the, on the demo. Oh, they say, oh, I can do that. And it squeaks their voice. First of all, you can have all the way up, you can have between uh, two fictional characters, a uh, conversation between. You can have uh, characters in, are you getting the sun? Oh, I thought you were getting <laughs> oh. um, And you can give, uh, uh, characters in your history, they can do conversation between them, and then as Rhonda said, all the way up through high school liter literature, you can have conversations between them as well. Yeah. This particular app. World language free. in high school. Yes, world language. ELL. I, and ELL <laughs> teacher that absolutely loves this because her students can speak that English and it tweaks, tweaks their voice to the point, or squeaks their voice to the point, that they do not feel intimidated by speaking. There is a paid app of this, but all I have ever used is the free version. So just so you know, it's free, and but there is a paid version, and it gives you more resources within the app. Okay, okay the next one we're going to talk about is uh, for writing as well, and it's on the same page. And it's, no, I actually it's up a page. Let's see. Yeah, let's go to third grade. Let me get to third grade. And it's called Class Chatter. It's a blog site for schools to use. So it's a safe place for you to be able to do blogging and you know being able to pro, being able to give uh, questions out to students about something that they're just being able to discuss within their class but being able to expose them safely to blogging and uh, this gives them a place to publish that's in Common Core that they need to publish their oh, works work. and so this would be a great place you could have kids actually publish poetry and have other kids comment on that piece through this because it is safe and it is within the classroom uh, and it is uh, a down in the elementary grades as well. So that's why we put it under third grade. There are several in our binder that will do this, and I'm just going to kind of throw out a couple. One is called Pen-O. Pen -O. P-E-N dot I-O. And I love this one for elementary kids because you create your own URL and you hand that to the kids. So they can go home at night with a URL that is only allowed inside that classroom and the kids can respond to what you've done in during the daytime, or they can take a piece of literature that you send them home to read, and they have to respond to that piece at night. Okay, let's go to fifth grade. And um, some of these are repeated within grades because they cover multiple, uh, multiple sections. There's one here called, we're not going to click on it, Boom Writer. It's one for writing and publishing. And actually, when you use this one, um, the kids can write their own chapters, and then the class can vote on the best chapter. It's all done online. You can um, also have that particular book published. Yes. So it does cost to have that done, but your kids can have their own books by the time they finish 
Explain Everything is an app that we use for videoing or explaining something. And we know that kids need to be able to vocalize a particular math piece. You know, how did I get the answer? What's the why behind this? Anytime we need that kind of piece or having them reteach something, Explain Everything is a great one. And I think it's $2.99. It is $2.99 now. Uh, but let me just tell you, we had a teacher that used it because a parent called her and said, uh, I don't get this concept in math. I need Instagram. Your help. I need your help. And she said, I don't get this concept in math. I need your help. So she explained it and explained everything and emailed it off and the parent got it. So okay, this one's called Instagram, a great resource for uh, doing research. Um, this is now an app, by the way. It used yes. to not be an app. It's just recently. And so recently. you actually can just put a word in. So just type in cypress trees. That's the one I, I tend to do all the time. So we're going to go up there and type in the search uh, cypress trees. And it will web out. So if I'm doing a report about cypress trees, and so I, I don't know where they grow. I, I don't really know what kind of research I need on it. I can Instagrock it, and it will Instagrock out a webbing of ideas kind of like the graphic organizer in Poplet, and it will give me suggestions of different things I might want to discuss or, or look up. Uh, I have a lot of high school kids that still do not know how to research. Um, they'll say, I can't find anything on my topic. And I'll say, uh, well, what, how did you search it? And they'll tell me. And I'll say, did you try a different, you know, some other keywords? Did you add some things to it? Did you put a plus sign and add some? Uh, no, I didn't do that, you know. But Instagram would help that situation because it would give them some other keywords that they could go in and search. So maybe diseases. I know diseases usually comes up here. Uh, Instagram also will link them to videos and pictures. Um, if you have a very tight filter, which Metro National is working towards not having one, I don't know how many of you are from Metro National, but if you have a tight filter, you will not see the YouTube videos, and sometimes you won't see the graphics, which looks to be When we roll picture. across any of these, uh, and I don't, I don't know if I don't see any that are actually pictures, but we're able to click on that and get some information, but it gives them a good place to get started if they're trying to figure out what they actually need to search about on that topic. And I, as a, media, a former media specialist, I love this piece. I think it's a great piece to have uh, for students to be well, able to, students, to guide I them. I used Instagram before I used Poplet because it in, introduced them the concept of webbing out their knowledge. And once they've seen an Instagram, then they move to Poplet and say what they know and what they don't know about it. Okay, let's see, are we in fifth grade? Um, we're going to go back and in fifth grade, we're going to look at Newsomatic. This is a new one for us. We just found it what, a month ago. It's mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful piece to use for your kids that need that news information piece. And notice it's just for kids. So it's a great news piece that's already written on the level of your students. You know, we used to have the weekly readers when I was in school. You know, those are great. And, and the writing level was good, and you could understand it, you know, so I could go home and talk to my parents about something that may be going on because I actually had gotten to read something about it. So uh, this is a great one, and, you know, if you've got a center, I think it's a, is it a Web 2.0 tool too? I don't think it is. I don't think so. I think it's just, just an app. So that one's really good. It's a real good nonfiction piece to add to your content that you're trying to teach your ELA, Um, look on our list and see what. Uh, it's Atomic Life, and it's time. It's time for it to stop? It's time for the solar. Is it time? <laughs> we'll tell it for a few more minutes. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, let's, 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 let's look at Comic Life. Life. But we also learned it easily. Oh, uh, let's see. Is it easily on this one? Go up uh, grade or two. Let's go up to seventh grade. Yeah, easily. Um, have, have you guys seen these up? Uh, you go to the doctor's office, or you go to a hospital, or you go to a college, or whatever. Have y'all seen infographics? Do you know what those are? Everywhere. Okay, I love Pinterest, and so at night sometimes I just get in the craft section and just scroll till it won't go scroll anymore. And I'm starting to see infographics in that section on like healthcare, like what are the things you need to do to clean your refrigerator, and it's an infographic. And I'm thinking, man, what an awesome way for kids to express visually information instead of using a PowerPoint, instead of making a movie, you know. Now, these are our templates. So you say, okay, I want to do, I want to use this one. So you click on that one. Then you can put your own data in that particular template. So maybe there might be a way you could use the TV Labs data, site, data stuff 
and be able to pull that information over into this and creatively make that. There is another one called PictoChart, and we have that one in our binder, and there's one called Visually. And one of those will let you create, I think it's PictoChart, and I think Visually is basically you send them your information and they make the graphic for you, so it's more of a business-oriented piece. Um, but what I love about it is it's just eye-catching. I'm a visual person, so I would much rather look at this and sit and listen to somebody run through PowerPoints and be able to sit and really look at it and soak it in. And um, so but our health science department actually did this on careers because they study careers as one of, their, one of their standards. And so they actually had the kids create visual infographics around that career. You know, what percentage of people work in this field? What do they make? You know, all that information they had to have, which is so much better than a report that the teacher would have to read. And now we're going to be able to use those in our hallway around our academy information so that the kids can actually see what kind of careers they could go into if they were in the health, health, the health science academy. Um, but really, really good, and I think you can go to visually and look at theirs. There's our little cuter, but like I said, you've got to send the data and pay for those. But I think you could go there and get some data information. If you were doing research on a topic, they may have that information already there, because I know they had one on STEM, mm -hmm. uh, women in STEM, you know, uh, jobs and that kind of stuff. So you could actually do research as well and find infographics already created on something that you might be doing. Uh, but you can create these in Word by using your shape, you know, your shape uh, icons to create a shape and pull in images. So some kids that are real creative might not need the template. They just might need it for an idea, and then they could go and create their own from a blank page in Word. So. Your young children, you say, uh, I've got elementary kids, I don't need to be worried about this at all. If you have kindergarten and first grade, they can start using these infographics. You probably need to be introducing them to, the, to it early on. Because we're seeing them, yeah. and very, very you know, it's a, it's. I think it's important for them to be able to understand what they are. All right, we'll go back to the binder and go to Comic Life over here. I have used Comic Life at the high school level. Uh, I've used it with uh, middle school. Uh, I think it's appropriate for elementary as well. But basically, you're building a comic strip, and it's an app now. But they also have a version that you can download uh, and get the actual application. We met And they don't know they're writing. And they don't know they're writing. Uh, we have high school kids that, again, kind of like what we use with sock puppets, you know, in Shakespeare, where they go in and recreate the act in more of a modern style, and they pick characters to represent. So a fish might represent somebody, and you know, they take that character and what that character's characteristics are, and they find an animal that represents that, and that becomes their comic uh, character within that strip. So just a really, really neat way to do writing. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. ninth grade. Oh, okay. We do it in ninth grade, but. Ninth grade, okay. Then have them recreate the story of Animal Farm in Comic Life. Very high end creativity, but it's also, you can assess their knowledge in Comic Go back to the binder and we'll click math, and I think we have a couple of math ones that we wanted to show real quick. How many of you uh, know about EduCreation? EduCreation is another great tool to be able to use a whiteboard because you can annotate on the top of it. So it's great for math and science both. Um, but it's a whiteboard app. Um, there's K2, another one. K2. Yeah, K2. I think it's in K2. And this other one here called Math Geometry is really good because it has the shapes, um, three-dimensional shapes in it. Now this is how elementary this looks. Very simple. Scroll, maybe, maybe. There you go. Okay. And the other one I wanted to show is called Number Line. Again, thinking about park and having students that, you know, they have to understand the technology in park to be able to do things. So there's a lot of dragging, there's a lot of dropping. And within this one, you have to actually drag the um, appropriate, appropriate fraction, fraction down, to the, down to the number line. So you could pull that up 
on your iPad and actually use that process so the kids start becoming familiar with that, but they're also still learning the concept as well. Level, so if you have kindergarten, first and second grade, yes, your kids could use this app because it is leveled. You can start with the very basics of fractions and go up from there. Okay. We're done. We're done. Thank you. We're, thank I'm you. sweating. I look so fast. <laughs>